Welcome to Electron Line. To get a better feel for the van der Waals equation, let's see how things change when we change one parameter, how does it affect other parameters. And again, the van der Waals equation sometimes is very difficult to wrap your brain around it because so many things are changing at the same time. But if you look at the standard equation or the ideal equation, and we replace v by v equals v over n, in other words, this is the number of, uh, this is the volume per number of moles, then we have the ideal equation written as PV equals RT. And of course, the van der Waals equation replaces P by this and replaces V by this. Now, in an ideal gas, if we want to reduce, say, the volume to 1 100 original volume, all we have to do is increase the pressure so that the pressure, the new pressure, is now 100 times as much as the original pressure because there's this inverse relationship between pressure and volume in the ideal equation. But with the van der Waals equation, you can see there's some other parameters in there that become quite important as the pressure increases to a large number, such as 100 times atmospheric pressure. So for a real gas, how do we need to look at it? And then we can say to reduce the quantity V minus B, and again, B is insignificant, when the, when the pressure is near atmospheric pressure, but it becomes significant when the pressure increases by a lot. So we have to say V minus B if we want that to be 1 100 the original volume, because again, the van der Waals equation allows us to let B go to zero or near zero when the pressure is near atmospheric pressure, so B is not, no longer significant, and A divided by V squared is also not significant. So we can say that to reduce the quantity V minus B to 1 100, the original volume, that would require this term to increase a hundredfold over the original pressure. So if we take, for example, oxygen, we know that at atmospheric pressure, a divided by V squared only accounts for 0.3% of the total pressure in the gas, and so we can typically ignore that. But if we're now going to increase the pressure to 100 times the original, the original pressure, then uh, what we need to realize is that A over V squared is 0.3% times 100 squared. Why 100 squared? Because this quantity, A over V squared, depends upon the volume squared, and of course, if we reduce the volume to 1 100, 1 100 squared is 1 over 10,000, and so that means that that term now becomes larger by a quantity of 10,000 over the original value. So instead of 0.3% of the total pressure in the gas, it now accounts for 3,000% of that original pressure. And so that means that 30% of the increase now, if we go from one atmospheric pressure to 100 atmospheric pressure, is accounted for by the term A over V squared. So we only need the new pressure to be 70 times the original pressure instead of 100 times the original pressure, since A over V squared accounts for 30% of that total increase. So that means that the new pressure is required to be 70 times the original pressure, not 100 times because it's additional term. And so you can see that the van der Waals equation helps us determine what the new pressure should be so that the effective pressure will be the new pressure plus, of course, A over V squared. Now, what we need to be careful of is that the pressure that we actually measure, of course, is the total pressure, means the effective pressure plus the term in here. So for a barometer that actually measures the pressure, we can tell no difference. It still would be 100 times the, the original pressure. We just have to realize with the van der Waals equation that 30% of that 100% is really accounted for by this, but what we'll actually measure will still be 100 times the original pressure. And so that's how we need to think about gases when we use van der Waals equation. 